Hello, I'm Mike Vrobel from dadcooksdinner.com and this is how to rotisserie a ribeye roast. I need to truss my boneless ribeye roast every inch and a half to tie it into a tight cylinder shape so it doesn't flop around on the rotisserie. After I figure out how many pieces of twine I need, I cut each piece long enough to give me some extra room to tie around the roast. Say four times the width of the roast? That seems about right. I tie the first truss about an inch in from the end of the roast. I loop the twine twice around itself, which is called a surgeon's knot, because when you pull it tight, it holds itself against the roast. It doesn't slip loose, making it easy for you to tie the second half of the knot. Repeat every inch and a half, maybe two inches, along the length of the roast. When the roast is trussed, trim off any excess string from the knots. We don't want it flapping loose in the rotisserie. It might burn in the heat of the grill. Next, rub the roast with a mix of salt, pepper, and herbs. I minced fresh thyme and fresh rosemary, and I'm sprinkling it all over the roast. Rub is a bad name for this. It's really more of patting it on after we sprinkle it. If you really do rub it hard, you're going to rub it all off onto your fingers, and it's not going to wind up on the roast. So think gentle padding to make sure it sticks while it's spinning in the rotisserie. I had extra sprigs of thyme and rosemary from the poultry pack of herbs I bought for the rub. So I'm going to tuck those under the trussing twine to add a little extra flavor to the roast. This really is an optional step. This doesn't make a big difference in flavor. You've rubbed the herbs directly on the roast after all. But I had these extra sprigs and it sure does look nice when it's spinning on the rotisserie. So I decided to add it for the video. If you don't feel like doing this extra work, skip it. I won't be offended. Now let's secure the roast to the rotisserie spit. Tighten on the first spit fork. You want to get the roast in about the middle of the spit. Then take the point of the spit, aim for the center of the roast, and drive the spit right through the middle. Watch your fingers on the other end. You don't want to poke yourself. Push the points of the spit fork into the roast or in this case, they're going right around it because of how narrow the roast is on that end. Then slide on the other spit fork and use it to secure the roast to the spit. Make sure everything's centered, tighten down the forks, and there you have it, one roast ready for the rotisserie. Now it's time to set up the grill. I already took out the grill grates and put the rotisserie motor on the rotisserie bracket, and I'm gonna preheat the grill by lighting burners one and six and my infrared rotisserie burner and turning them to high. I put a drip pan in the center on the burner covers and preheat the grill for 10 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes later, the grill is ready to go. Let's get this roast spinning. Plug the point of the spit into the rotisserie motor. Set the notch in the groove on the other side of the grill. Make sure the drip pan is centered onto the roast and turn on the rotisserie motor to get everything spinning. I let the roast make at least one full revolution to make sure everything is tightened down properly and nothing is catching in the grill. Looks like we're good to go. Close the lid and let the roast cook. Total cooking time for the roast is going to be about an hour and 15 minutes for medium rare, but I'm going to start checking it after a half an hour of cooking because the only way to be sure that the roast is cooked properly is by measuring the internal temperature. My target is 120 degrees Fahrenheit for a medium rare roast. Not there yet, let's let it cook for a while longer. I've been checking the roast every 15 minutes or so, and we've been cooking for about an hour and 10 minutes total time. I think the roast is about ready. It looks nice and golden brown, but let's check the temperature to be sure. 121 degrees in the thickest part. That's right where I want it. The roast is ready to go in the house and rest before carving. The first thing we have to do once the roast is in the house is get it off of the spit and cut the trussing twine loose. If we let the roast cool, the beautiful brown crust on the outside will stick to the twine and pull away when we try to remove it from the roast. As you can see, if we get to the twine immediately, it pulls away from the roast without any sticking.
If you followed my advice and tucked extra herb sprigs underneath the trussing twine, make sure to pick those off now. They often have very hard woody stems and those are not good to eat and you can't really carve through them either. I let the roast rest for about 10 minutes before carving so the juices can redistribute. And now for the moment of truth. Did I get my beautiful medium rare? Oh yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Carve into about half inch thick slices and serve. This is Mike Rubble from DadCooksDinner.com. Thanks for watching.